This is the other half of the Tin Can Mail story. We've already explored the Pacific island of Niwa Fo'o that floated its mail in tin cans to and from passing ships. But this video is going to focus on a completely different kind of tin can mail. One that required a lot more luck and is actually credited with saving lives more than once. So let's explore the Scottish islands of St Kilda and its form of tin can mail in this episode of Hashtag Philately. The islands of St Kilda are located in the westernmost part of the Outer Hebrides off of Scotland. It's an archipelago of four islands and it is actually the westernmost part of the United Kingdom, some 40 miles or 65 kilometers west from the nearest land. And while St Kilda is incredibly scenic with jagged cliffs shooting out of the ocean, green pastures and an abundance of bird life that includes puffins, it's a pretty harsh place to try and live on. Primarily because it is disconnected from the rest of Scotland, strong winds and ocean swells can make visiting the islands difficult or impossible by boat. Yet people had lived there for over 2,000 years. There is really one island of the four that people lived on, Herta, and there is evidence that it was inhabited during the Bronze Age. In recorded history, we know that 180 people at one point lived on the island. But the island is so isolated that boats would seldom stop by. Sometimes years would go by before a boat visited from the mainland. And when a boat did stop by, it was a key opportunity to send and receive mail as well as obtain supplies from the mainland. So where does the postal story come in yet? Well, it begins with a journalist by the name of John Sands. This Scottish journalist had an interest in exploring the lives of people living on the Scottish islands. And he visited St Kilda in 1876 for a year. During that time, he got to know the St Kildans very well and take part in their customs. But something interesting happened in February of 1877 while John Sands was still on the island. An Austrian ship was passing by and ran aground, smashing into the rocks of St Kilda. The crew of nine just escaped death, but were now marooned on the island with John Sands and the St Kildans. The crew were extremely grateful to the St Kildans who accommodated their new visitors. And after just five weeks of waiting for another passing boat to signal and hopefully rescue the crew, they began to run into a very big problem. This was February, winter time, and the island has barely had enough food supplies to last through the winter. Now with nine additional mouths to feed, starvation on the island for everyone was inevitable. Every day that a boat did not show up to rescue the crew, was a day closer to running out of food. So John Sands had the idea of sending a message to the mainland by floating it in the sea, uh, like a legit message in a bottle. I kid you not. John Sands actually sent two messages, one of which he used a lifebuoy from the shipwreck and attached it to a carved piece of wood in a shape of a boat. They placed a pickle jar inside of the boat with a message begging for assistance from the Austrian consulate. The other message was also placed in a wooden boat but had a sail attached to it. The boats had the words open this on them and John Sands placed these in the water and watched them slowly float away. You can imagine that the islanders and the shipwreck crew were rolling their eyes as John Sands pushed these messages into the water in hopes of reaching the mainland. But it worked. Within two weeks the HMS Jackal arrived on the island to rescue the Austrian sailors and John Sands providing biscuits and oatmeal to the residents to replenish their provisions. This of course amazed the St Kildans as they hadn't ever thought floating mail would be something that actually worked. The lifebuoy message arrived first, taking only nine days. It floated to not there or there, like over here. First say on the Orkney Islands, some 210 miles or 337 kilometers away. Nine days? Do I dare say it? That's faster than some of today's Postals, I'm not going to say it, but it's incredible because it was picked up and forwarded to the Austrian consulate in Glasgow. The other one reached over here after 22 days. Two successes off of the first try. This is incredible for a number of reasons. Most importantly is that it saved the islanders and the wrecked crew and is a real example of maroon shipwreck crews using messages in a bottle in hopes of being saved. After hours of digging in the newspaper archives, I finally found a small mention of this in the Surrey Times on February 24th, 
1877. It reads, in the parish of Bercy, a bottle secured to a life buoy was picked up stating that the Austrian ship was out near the island. The captain and eight of the crew are in St. Kilda and have no means of getting off. Provisions are scarce. The find of this will much oblige by forwarding this letter to the Austrian consul in Glasgow. To be honest, I had a bit of a hard time believing the story until I found that paragraph in the newspaper because it is a bit too good to be true, but it really happened. And so the islanders who initially didn't take John Sand's mailing attempt seriously were now super impressed and the drifting of messages to the mainland became common practice within the decade. Of course, they placed the appropriate payment in their mailboats to have these messages enter the postal system and it saves the islanders again. In September of 1885, the islanders again faced starvation after a severe storm ruined their food supplies. And so a 14-year-old boy launched five different floating devices containing messages asking for help. One of them quickly arrived in Gallonhead, some 62 miles or 100 kilometers away. And upon finding the little mail boat and realizing the danger that the islanders faced, people quickly raised 110 pounds together. They bought provisions and chartered a boat to make it to the island and help the islanders out. That schoolboy's messages saved the island from starvation again. In 1898, a wildlife photographer by the name of Richard Kirton published a book after visiting St. Kilda to explore and document the wildlife and birds of the area. The book is titled With Nature and a Camera, in which he included a famous photograph of a bearded St. Kilden placing a male boat, as they were referred to, into the water. This particular mailboat was attached to a sheep's bladder. This photograph gave the world a glimpse of this unique mail system. And he also had the St. Kildans mail him a letter, which actually arrived safely to his home. And there's a couple things that he mentions in the book, which is interesting. One of which is that he was assured that mailboats frequently ended up in Norway, over 500 miles away, missing the UK entirely. But the nice Norwegians always seem to assist with getting the message to the appropriate person. The book continues to confirm that these mailboats were used fairly regularly when communications needed to be sent, and that tin cans were occasionally used inside the mailboat to help protect the messages. Actually, the St. Kildans experimented with a variety of different floating contraptions, often using a tin can, but mostly using a little wooden crafted mailboat in which something would be placed in it to protect the mail from water, such as a tin can or a pickle jar or whatever they had. So this really isn't tin can mail. Well, it isn't tin can mail in the way that neo 4 or floated its mail in tin cans to and from boats, but the term does get associated with St. Kilda. What also blew my mind about all of this is when I researched a bit about the sea currents and how violent the ocean can be in that area, the currents continuously change. It's incredible that any of these mail attempts actually worked. I could easily imagine these just ending at the bottom of the ocean or showing up somewhere as far away as Brazil several years later, so I am impressed. By 1906, a regular postal service was in place where fishing trawlers would make their way out to the island to pick up and drop off mail, and this was done at least six times a year. But even with this regular postal service, the St. Kildans still floated their mail in their form of tin can mail using the little mail boats. During the First World War, the island's population took a bit of a hit with men leaving to go fight in Europe. And the years that followed saw the population decline to a mere 36 people by 1930. At this point in time, the islanders agreed to evacuate the island and not return to reside there. And there has been no permanent population on the island ever since they left in 1930. St. Kilda became a World Heritage Site. It was actually Scotland's very first World Heritage Site. And in the 1960s, the UK Ministry of Defence installed a missile tracking station on the island. So while the island has had no permanent population since the 1930 evacuation, there have been people manning this station on the island since the 1960s. And the station has taken part in the mailboat practice that the St. Kildans once used to do. Visitors to the island could get a special hand stamp on a philatelic cover and then have it launched into the sea. Souvenirs are always popular, and a letter with the St. Kilda mark addressed to yourself can later bring back all sorts of memories. It's enterprising of the service to imitate an old island tradition with their tin can mail, and it helps to relieve the boredom out here on a tour of duty to the back of beyond. For in times when contact with the rest of the world was rare, the islanders sent letters by sea, not in tin cans, but in hollowed-out pieces of wood, shaped like boats. 
Now a football bladder serves in place of an inflated sheep's stomach to catch the wind and drift the little boat on its way. Many a party likes to reenact an earlier launching with a visit to the traditional rock where once the bearded St. Kildon used to roll up his trousers to edge the boat out on the waves. In this, as in all else in St. Kilda, the west wind will play a part along with the currents of ocean. So I have one of these items that supposedly made it from St. Kilda to the mainland via this tin can mail that was launched by the station. Let's check it out. Just as we saw in the video, these letters bear the red St. Kilda hand stamp with a puffin, the furthest station west. The cover has a lilac three penny wilding. This particular wilding was first issued in 1958. The wilding series were the definitives before the long running Machen series featuring Queen Elizabeth II. And this particular wilding is a regional as it has the Scottish thistle in the bottom right. The postmark was a challenge and unfortunately I was unable to get a date. But I did figure out that this entered the official postal service at Loch Boysdale, Nunton, in the parish of South Uest. There is another hand cancel that is slightly faded that reads St. Kilda Tin Can Mail, with the coordinates and the initials of the person playing postmaster at the base. Now, did this cover actually make the journey via Tin Can Mail from St. Kilda to South Uest? I hope so, and maybe, but I have a couple of concerns. While it is stamped tin can mail and signed, it doesn't have a launch date. And we saw in the video the launch date getting included on the cover. Maybe the person that did this particular cover was lazy or didn't know what the date was or was disinterested in what he was doing and didn't really care. I'm looking for excuses, but if you look at the video, this guy, for example, he doesn't exactly look thrilled to be doing this activity. Well, keep in mind that they are stationed on a remote island with not a lot going on. So wouldn't this be a highlight of their day? Or maybe they didn't write the date down because they actually didn't know what date this particular mailboat was going to be launched. If you think about it, you would wait for the appropriate weather conditions and ocean conditions before throwing a mailboat into the water. Maybe. But then I looked at the postmark. Nunton is in the area of Ben Bacula on South US which has an air base, actually a Royal Air Force Sea and Rescue Station, where helicopters can take Ministry of Defense personnel to and from St. Kilda. So maybe it didn't make its way via tin can mail in the ocean like it advertises. Maybe it was just flown to South US and then placed in the nearest pillar post box uh, outside the air base. There are not a lot of covers out there that have made the trip and are authentic, at least any that I could find. Post-1930 covers such as this one do make their rounds on eBay and other places. And when they are available, they are not expensive. Keep in mind, they are philatelic covers deliberately sent to make a collectible cover. And I question how many of them are real based on this particular cover of mine. Although mine still could have been sent via tin can mail, it's just very unlikely. You will also find genuine covers online from St. Kilda when the island was still inhabited but these are typically not sent via their mailboats. At the time of filming this video, there was an interesting cover that was on eBay in which an article was written about it. It was actually sent the year after the evacuation by St. Kilda's last postmaster, Neil Ferguson, in 1931. The envelope, which bears the message on the back, find a please post, was discovered by a lobster fisherman at Rona Island in Loch Meddy and posted onto Edinburgh 19 days later. While the island was evacuated in 1930, the postmaster, Neil Ferguson, went back in 1931 as a guardian of the island for a short time and sent at least one mailboat with this cover. For genuine covers pre-1930 that made the trip via tin can mail, these will be very expensive and there aren't too many at all out there. You can find articles when they have been listed with pretty big price tags and for the right reason, these are really interesting items that captured a fascinating aspect of St. Kilda, Scotland and mail transportation history. Apparently, those known to exist are usually in a museum. There is an interesting follow-up story worth noting. In August of 2010, the National Trust of Scotland that cares for the island launched a mailboat to commemorate the 80th anniversary 
of the evacuation that took place in 1930. The mailboat consisted of numerous postcards to be mailed if found, one of which was to Prince Charles. This mailboat eventually was found in Norway in April of 2020, almost 10 years after the boat was launched, just in time for the 90th anniversary of the evacuation of St Kilda. The postcards were sent in the mail after being discovered and Prince Charles did actually get his postcard along with the other recipients. I'll leave that link in the video description along with a number of helpful links that will tell you more about St Kilda's tin can or mailboat history, as well as more about the island itself. St Kilda is a fascinating island. Also, if you haven't seen the first part of this video where I explore the island of Neofor or in the Pacific, check that out. That video is in the video description as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and comment below. Let me know your thoughts and if there are other islands or other places where I should explore their postal history. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.